Today is a new day and a new series has begun. No, this isn't taking over my 100 to 400 days and counting series, but I thought I'd spruce Valheim up with some mods from the amazing modded community. BT Dubs, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And as always, thank you so much for your continued support. I also wanted to surprise you all and to say thanks with this super fun, very different and modded adventure. You're going to see some crazy, some wacky and super fun stuff. So sit back, relax and enjoy the ride as I spent 100 days in modded Valheim and here's what happened. Day one was spent like any other day, finding my footing and figuring out where I was going to build my base. I'd also go on to using and playing with a lot of different mods, but we'll get to that eventually. For now, let's have some fun. First thing I did was locate the initial boss, noticing all the active pin locations for nearby foods. Checked out my skill tab with some exciting new classes on the right and went on to crafting my hammer. Opening up many recipes to come, something else you may have noticed were the graylings, but more specifically the one star grayling. Fighting it with my fists just wouldn't take, so moments later I crafted up a club and went ape on them both. Collected some resources while journeying north, looking for that perfect spot I'd call home. I finally found it, a little corner that would soon be mine, but I first had to clear out some branches and bushes. Next was to build the Forsaken Altar that allows for class selection. I went through the majority of them reading through and deciding on the Warlock class. Nighttime slowly approached as I was building away some floors, side walls, and poles. I was chopping carelessly at some wood, really getting into a groove, and seconds later dying. That definitely hasn't happened before. Funny enough though, that put me into day two. Eagerly picking myself up and making my way back to base, I did have an opportunity or two to use my primary skill. This thing takes souls and on kill drops items immediately. Very different and rather enjoyable mod on my end. I recovered all my items on my corpse, finishing up more of my home with some roofing, a crafting bench, and then trying to decide on walls or windows. Later in the day, I went on to finishing up the hut, building a few fire pits, some torches inside, and cooking up the food I have on me. On day three I went hunting, finding some boars and then gathering more wood. I crafted up some pants because the breeze was too much for down under. I took my warlock skills outside once more, clearing up some necks, a boar or two, and a grayling. I figured I'd call it a night. This must have been the fastest I personally ever attempted a boss fight, but on day four I felt ready. Had plenty of food and HP, skills at the forefront, and made my way through the meadows arriving at the altar of the boss, Ikthir. Sacrificing deer heads, the boss fight started. Thing was, this boss and like more to come was different. The Ikthir here had reflective and I wasn't sure what that meant. Though I got some ghosty boys to fight him while using my soul steel skill and ungodly spike skill. Damage was being dealt and I kind of felt bad for the boss. Moments later, I killed him. The boss was dead and loot had dropped. Some blue and magical items, a trophy and antlers. Collecting all the rewards, I pressed on and back home I went, storing a few items and resting up from a well-deserved victory. Day five, I got really lucky and found my first two-star boar. This thing looked thick in every sense of the word. But back at home, I started building some workbenches, upgrades, and soon after crafting myself new armor with a leather helmet. Later that same day, I found myself in the meadows looking at several boars this time. Guess who got a pent kill and more? I did. Killed the two-star deer and mined up some copper with a new mod, Vein Miner. The next day I visited a crypt, searching for some circling cores so I could fast travel between places easily. I came across some skeletons, finding some treasure along the way, and acquiring recipes for runes that I would soon come to use. I did have to run back home, but that was the easy part. Set up some chests for the food by the fire and deposited what I had on me. On day 7 I got to finishing up my roof, building a furnace outside with the copper I gathered the other day, cooking up some coal with my cookie boys. I didn't have enough cores for a kiln, so this was plan B. Day eight, I finally got myself the first of many pieces, copper. A copper bar, that is. With a few recipes, I started with a forge, building that in the front. I went on to building a new crafting piece, the enchanter, or building piece. This enchanting piece is a huge thing when it comes to the mods I have because this allows me to do so much. It allows me to enchant, it allows me to disenchant later on, which you'll come to see again. But more importantly, it allows me to sacrifice these epic loot pieces that I have gotten from either drops of a boss or a creature or an enemy or whatever, you know, wherever I got it from. It breaks it down into all these magic dusts, these magical properties, and they are really, really cool because it allows you to make your armor, your weapons, your equips, 
everything so very strong later game, but you usually have to farm up for that, which is honestly the best part of it too. I love farming and this is just a huge thing for me. Sacrificing some items of different rarities so I could start collecting essence scents for later. By this point, it would be easier with a straight up kiln, so I went on my way back into the Black Forest. I came across another crypt, killing off skeletons and collecting all the loot from the chests inside. Certainly cores as well. I also managed to get the next boss location, which was the Elder, quite close too. I did find a three star skeleton and this guy was very tough and rather intimidating. So I hid behind a door trying my best not to die. <laughs> back outside the crypt, it was nighttime and I was headed home but not before getting some tin. Built a few kilns and another furnace, which made progress feel really good, and so I called it a night. Day nine is where the forge opened up with more recipes as I crafted my first bronze bar. I also crafted another chest for bars and whatnot, making myself the next upgrade for the forge station level two. Filling up the furnaces and kilns while they cooked, I crafted my first bronze item, which was a spear. A new thing I learned too is that this spear was one-handed and that paired well with my shield. Feeling good and having way too many deer trophies, I decided to tackle the boss once more. Or many more times, one would say. The first spawn ended up being mending, which allows for it to heal over time and non-stop. I also got a shielded boss to spawn, a summoner, which actually summons Greylings to fight if in need of assistance. And the last one was a reflective. I really liked having all creatures from animals to bosses have randomized effects or stars. With all the rare items and antlers I collected though, I sacrificed each one into magical properties or items, storing them in chest above. The following day went on to me crafting a bronze axe, giving me the ability to finally start cutting down birch trees for fine wood. That meant new items and building materials. The first of many being a portal to and from places. With the new portal mod I have in the vanilla game, the base game of Valheim, you actually cannot travel necessities for building and crafting when it comes to like ores and such like that. Very important items. About midday, the forest started moving and that meant graylings to dwarfs of all sizes started to attack. I ran outside in awe of all the new stars and sizes, using different abilities from my final move to spikes and stealing souls, each one killing and dealing great amounts of damage. The AoE skill that took HP filled me with joy because it was so satisfying to watch everything just poof in a matter of seconds. Afterwards, I started collecting more fine wood, building a portal back in the Black Forest. On day 11, I built a new station, the Stone Griddle. This thing allowed for a new type of food and for that food to be cooked, either bacon or pork rinds, and you could get these both from boars. I also crafted myself a new pickaxe and helmet made from bronze. Day 12, I needed more wood, so I changed classes from Warlock to Berserker. Now, changing classes here is super simple, super easy. It's free to do. You have all these different classes to play with with this specific mod, and so chop, 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 I went. Also mined out more copper back in the black forest, fighting my first trolley boy with some ghosts of mine. We won and claimed our reward. Day 13 was more organizing of items in chests, building some new furniture, as well as getting my rusted buff up to comfort eight. I also picked up some tin with the newly required rusted buff. This buff was up to, I think, was it 15 or 16 minutes? I, I honestly can't remember. You guys will see it. Yeah. On day 14 and 15, I did more of the same, mining out some tin and killing off another big trolley boy. I also made enough bronze bars to trade in for new armor, top and bottom, and a buckler shield as well. Made some space in front of my home and built two more furnaces just in case. The next few days, I sought out to a bit of renovations, leveling out the land and raising it where I could. I extended both sides to give myself more space. I was also able to build a wooden spiked wall so we didn't have any unwanted guests. Day 19, I got myself a new hammer. Odin's hammer, in fact, and started a new project. I wanted a house specifically for the crafting benches and then a house for all my cooking related items. I started with some log walls and then a roof, added some windows and a door or two. Progress. On day 20, I continued more of the same work, finishing up with the builds and moving all the workbench related and forge related crafts into this new home. Shelves for the upgrades or what I could fit at least, it turned out really well. I also needed a place for my chests, but without them being in the way. 
I found some nice trap doors and dug a hole in the middle, placing down the chests and then the trap doors themselves. This was actually kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm smiling right now. <laughs> Can you tell I'm smiling? Because I am. <laughs> Outside and finishing up the house, filling in any holes. This was a cool log cabin. Day 21, I worked a bit on my cooking, chef's hat and all. The next day, I was in the Black Forest, looking for a troll for its trophy and some more cores for another portal. I still had my Berserk class on and wanted to try something out, pulling them from afar and let me tell you, it worked. Day 23, I was ready to find this next boss. Choosing to head east from my base seemed closer to me. Okay, so it's like straight out. Actually, is it that island? It might be that island. No way, hold on. We're gonna go find out. I'm just gonna... Stocked up on the necessary resources, building a little raft to cross the ocean. Thankfully, there wasn't any hiccups with that. And once I landed, I set the portal down right away and went back home. Today was the day. I got my rested buff and made my way to the elder spawn through the portal I built previously, only to realize I didn't have enough ancient seeds. I did, however, find a spawner and thankfully farmed up some brutes and quite efficiently, might I add. I made a fatal mistake though, because in summoning the next boss in which I did, this dude had mending. Elder the mending. Is that good? Is mending good? I don't know. Oh, what the hell? This dude is healing. I just noticed that. Oh my god. Oh, he kind of hit me there. It was hard enough fighting it at range, but I had to stick to melee. Too close and I'm dead as well, but not close enough and the boss heals all the damage that was dealt. At this stage, I needed to head home right away, changing classes from Warlock to Berserker for that additional attack speed and sword. Making my way back through it all, I started swinging, poking, and prodding. It's okay, it's okay, everything's fine, everything's fine. And finally killing the boss. <gasps> I did it! Run, 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 run! Oh my god, <laughs> that mending boss, holy crud. We got some new runes, we got some new things. Oh boy. Let me tell you, this took a while. I won't sit here and say that it was easy because it really could have gone any other way. But loading up the rewards and the new recipes, I hightailed it back home and sleeping off that doozy of a fight. The following day, I went back outside using the wonderful Berserker class to help me on my way and chop a lot of wood down. I'm talking a lot of wood. It was chopped down this very day. With such speed and accuracy, I made it look like child's play. Most of the wood was to be turned into coal anyhow. I did sort of my inventory storing anything I didn't need then, filling up the furnaces with extra coal I did have on me. Day 26 was another day of deconstructing and building a new, a new home for my cookery that was. I started by moving the portal and renaming it inside my log cabin of a house, tearing down and collecting all the wood from the hut we started with. Next, I made a little chest for a few items so my inventory wasn't full, filling in any spots that needed stone and then flattening out the land by doing so with my hoe. I did go on to add additional pieces of land by the shoreline. Once that was done and I started the new home. A bunch of floors to get me going, some more log walls because these things were fancy AF, and some windows to give it that extra je ne sais quoi. Added some roofing all around and finished up with more of the exterior. The next days I continued the build, placing some light sources around, a few fireplaces inside with cooking racks and two cauldrons. I then added some storage units above so they wouldn't be in the way. A stone griddle because, let's be honest, who really needs that many cooking racks? Back outside now, I did happen to build some pathways which meant I needed to line up the entrance door once more. Moving the doors so that I had it lined up, I then fixed up any walls that seemed out of place. One thing I also forgot to do and happens almost every time was my actual roof to the cookery. So back up I went and I swear I can't make this up but for some reason something or someone lathered up my feet with butter and fell to my death. Once again. Eventually making it around with some poles I built and then adding the roofing top to give the smoke some place to go, it was finally done. On day 29 I was up bright and early, mining out and finishing up my moat. Oh yeah, did I mention I had a moat now? Look at the moat. It's the water is here and everything. It's actually really cool. I like this idea. It definitely like, gives my base more defense, especially when coming around, and I don't have to worry about doing some sort of like huge wall that's really not needed. It, it honestly isn't. I mean, this is probably the best out of what I really needed and or wanted. 
This is good. This was stage one of my defense, but I also wanted a way to push things back. First, we would need core wood because in Odin's hammer, there was upgraded spike stakes. Collecting as much wood as one could though, I returned home building the main attraction, the core sharp stakes. Placing one by one all until I reached the right side of my base. Day 30 is where I actually built the rest of the spiked barriers, making my place one cool mother trucker. I loved everything about what I did here. Once said and done though, I was back in my cookery, building a new bench called the alchemy table, which provided potions of all sorts. I also cooked up a few jams and called it a night. I went for a nice hike on day 31, collecting a few apples before heading back to the spawn of Greydorfs by the boss farming up some birds or when I could, managed to find a crypt and picked me up some treasures again, ranging from gems to cores and money. Oh, that's a four star. Oh my God. This is the first four star I've ever seen. Holy crap. Look at this thing. Four stars. Good Lordy. Mined out tin too while I was at it. On top of all of that, I saw my friend again. And this time I knew who he was more specifically Odin. Oh. That's Odin. You guys said that was Odin last time, right? I know for a fact you guys said that was Odin last time. Now, I don't know how true this is, but for some reason, I always thought if you spotted Odin, you could soon after find the merchant in that general vicinity. Please don't hold that against me. If it's wrong, it probably is. But last thing I did was reach the end of the forest, noticing the swamps ahead and setting up a portal. This was perfect timing. That's exactly what I did though. Day 32, I was back in the swamps, killing some droggers to leeches and skeletons. I found my first iron crypt as well, using the swamp key and entering the spooky tomb. Mining up a few veins, I had about 20 pieces of iron on me and didn't want to risk losing it. I went back home, storing and repairing any items that needed it. Day 33, I picked up some of the smelted iron bars, getting a lot of new recipes that made me so happy to see. I eventually made my way back into the swamps, first breaking down the portal and then clearing out any mobs by that first crypt we went to and finally building the portal right outside for easy access. Done and done. Back inside the crypt. Ooh, another. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, better axe, baby. <laughs> Ooh, half a stack of thing already too. So I was lucky enough to find a three-star Draugr as well. This guy was really tough and I wasn't planning on dying again. What? Where did this guy come from? Oh, he's a level three Draugr. Help me, help me. Somebody help me, somebody help me, somebody help me, somebody help me, somebody help me. I got this, I got this. I didn't know they could swim. Just keep him right there. Just don't move, just stop, just go away. Oh my God. This is bad, this is bad, this is bad. I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Oh, my first legendary. Oh, baby. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my God. Look at that. Five of them. So it has discovery radius, fire damage reduction, slash damage reduction, stamina regen. Oh, my God. That my first legendary. <laughs> yeah. Day 34 was spent smelting and cooking up any bars I could. Of course, it wouldn't be Valheim if not for a foul smell from the swamp, though this is exactly what I planned for with those spikes built days before, and I just stood there, seeing them go to work. Yay, the spikes are actually working too, look at this. <laughs> and then I could just like steal their soul from over here. This was one of the easiest events because of the work I put into my base. That same day, with the iron we cooked up, I crafted a new set of armor and returned to the swamps. <gasps> that's a level four. Holy crap. Oh, that's a level four. Ah, no legendary. Come on. The next week, things got interesting. I was still in the swamps at this point, but happened to die a few times. Oh, you're a two star and I'm dead. That makes sense. <laughs> God, these guys are really strong. Like, I love the AoE from them because I can just, you know, do it from afar and spam the ability, which is hilariously OP. But at the same time, it's also very weak in that sense because it doesn't do a lot of damage, so you do have to use it often enough. Oh! I didn't... I'm... <laughs> building a new cooking station that would soon come to aid me in my belly greatly. I also built some bees knees, laying down my crops in the bigger portion of my home and some new fermenters in my cookery. 
Back at home, I was outside my base and I spotted the thickest bunny I've ever seen in a video game. This thing was big. Is that a rabbit? I don't remember rabbits being in this game. When did that even... That's a big rabbit. Holy crap. Look at this rabbit. Oh, it's just a little squeak. The last thing I did was change out all my smaller chests for iron ones with twice the space. Day 41 and 42, I decided to look for that long lost merchant, or so I hoped. That meant I needed to head back to the Elder Boss portal, jumping on my raft and sailing in the direction which I marked on my map. And then Bone Mass is right there. We're definitely gonna run into a serpent. Uh, no, I don't want to, but yeah. I don't have a bow. All I have is my magic skills. Might be able to kill it. While surfing the ocean, I did come across a few sightings. That being a trolley boy with some mama and papa dares. This wasn't going to work though. The raft I was on felt too slow and I needed to go far fast. And this is why I had portal supplies. Building one in the middle of nowhere and gathering all the required items for the biggest of ships, the long ship. I built that bad boy and set sail yet again. The darkness crept on by with some fog that settled in and found myself lost, nearing the plains biome too. No, 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 no. Marked a few structures down while on my ship and making my way to the bone mass marker. Cleared out a few monsters, I found a nice little stone structure and set up another portal leading to and from home. This was perfect. This was nice. Awesome stuff. Day 43, I spent building a few more bee's knees, letting the honey build up. I also found it rather dark and went around the base, some resin in hand and lighting anything that was low or not lit. I also wanted to say, if you made it this far in the video, it's that time again. So comment big cheese in the comments section down below. And if you are enjoying yourself so far, you know what to do. Now, here's a little tip for some of these mods. I took the next two days trying to get my wither bones back because when you first die in Valheim, and if your inventory is full, you have to manually select stuff back to get everything. I was dumb first time around and that led to the wither bones being stuck in my inventory as they were invisible, but the weight was still there. Come on, guys. Come on. Almost there. You're so close. You just come on, hit me. There you go. <laughs> Oh, you guys took your time, didn't you? Didn't you? I did finally get them back after making sure everything was full and dying so I could manually pull them out and leave that janky tomb to sit and stir. There they are. There's the wither bones. See, I had 62 wither bones, man. I'm going to leave the wither bones in my inventory so I don't have to worry about that stuff. I then watched and killed a big blue boy three star grailing and then took off to bed. The next two days were here and I felt it was time. Time to fight and kill some bone mass. Not before picking up the berserker class and heading out to the altar though. Bones down and watched as the next boss started to spawn. I got lucky and had a summoner bone mass. Though with the class, it was easy enough. Ah, I'm winning. I gotcha. You're on the ropes. Oh God, poison. Can I pull the boss? Oh, I can pull the boss. No one told me I could pull the boss! Oh, that kind of scared me a lot. And there's a lot of poison happening. I can't get out of the green stuff. Where'd the boss go? Come to me. Oh, we got him! He dead. He died straight away to my OP <laughs> berserk class. <laughs> Oh, I got the wishbone. Heck yeah, look at that. Defeating the boss though gave me hope once more and new items to then build off of, which at this point I wasn't done and spawned another. The fight was legendary, but still easily taken down by yours truly, Ray of Pandas. Day 48, a new event started and one that I didn't think would happen so soon. A cold wind blows from the mountains event, and thus I had to deal with the flying drakes. Did I kill him? Oh, <gasps> I did kill him. Come here, come here, come here. Ah, ooh, wait, what? I got an egg? I got mochi. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. This is a three star Drake too. Oh my God. Leave me alone. Go, wait. What'd I just do? 
there's another one. And boop, got him. The next day, I took some time around the base, cleaning up any unnecessary things and picking up materials for a portal. I needed to attach the boss trophies to the altar still. From what Bone Mass dropped that previous day we fought him, I was able to craft a new rune. This rune was greatly amazing, so good, because it gives me extra movement speed that allows double in agility. So once I got to the altars, I built my portal atop the hill, just before placing the trophies down and then catching some Zs. Day 50, I was back to farming, planting any and all turnips I had. Looking to make better food, that then meant I needed more thistle. So out I went back to the black forest, scared, alone, and in the dark. I'm a zooming, I'm a zoom zoom. Zoom zoom zoom, zoom zoom zoom. I'm just going so fast, ah, he can't stop me. Can't stop, won't stop, zoom zoom zoom. Running through like a crazed person as I collected more thistle and jump scaring myself to no ends. Oh, I got too big of a jump there. <laughs> so big of a jump. Oh my god. Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Alright. Oh my god, Jesus Christ, that guy scared me. Oh, oh my god, I thought I was Godzilla. Seriously, like, I <laughs> was running to, to these things, and all of a sudden, this, this boy is here. Day 51 was here and I still needed some more entrails and blood bags. So, of course, I traveled to the lands of the swamps, searching around the bone piles. I was killing big to small draugers from elites to leeches and so on. Look how big they are compared to my little dude. I feel like a little, <laughs> I feel so small. That's literally a one star, but it's an elite, I will say. Oh, I got a pickaxe. I didn't even realize that. Oh, indestructible, indestructible pickaxe. All right, we got the pickaxe for all the pickaxes. This is what I needed, guys. Indestructible means it will never break. Means the durability, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I managed a mighty bit before turning in at home. The next two days, I was back in the swamps, mining more muddy scrap pile as I searched chests as well for some withered bones. Opening new crypts and search for more, the plan was to eventually farm the bone mass boss for a bit when it came to. I also picked up the turnips that had been planted and threw down another batch. Day 54 was the day, where I had enough bones and a game face on. Standing in front of the altar for bone mass seconds before, I had my two-handed sorta and a plan. That plan didn't go well. Based off a few different types of all while collecting enough items to max out my inventory. Day 55 and 56, I looked for change, that being silver and anything I could kill in the snow biome. I took my buff and started the trek. Running through the meadows with my running buff, it gave me speeds unmatched. I came up to my first little peak, snow all around, but nothing really much to find. Back down the hill I went. I don't know what that was. What is this? Oh, it's a golem! Okay, I thought I could mine that. That's a golem. I don't want to fight that. I'm good. Eventually coming across this weird altar that asked for graylings as a sacrifice. Didn't want to mess with that right now as I had no clue what it really did or was about. I was, however, able to swim across some open waters and make my way to a much bigger snow biome, building a safe return portal just on the outskirts before heading home. Day 57 was spent gathering and planting more turnips I had. And trust me, guys, this gets really good later in the story as I realized something pretty well late on. <laughs> Crafting up some new foods like kebabs and candied turnips, my food really couldn't get any better than it was. Heading back to the snow biome, fended off some monsters from wolves of different difficulties. The same went for drakes as these guys were quite a nuisance. Thankfully, I found all the silver I'd honestly need, mining it up and almost getting myself killed in the process with the hole I dug. Safely getting out though and building another portal back home, that was called snow too. Don't forget that, Ray. The next few days went on as the same fighting my way through snowy tundra as I bested a few wolves, some drakes that gave me problems again, but outsmarting them with my wits, that and I finally had a bow on me. Not only that, but seeing and fighting my first golem. Is there a golem again? Oh, come on. What did I ever do to you, buddy boy? Actually, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these. Or he's just gonna one hit them too. That makes sense. Or is he one hitting? Eh, not really. They're kind of doing stuff, you know, when they hit them or hit him. Staying alive as I could, I summoned a few ghosty boys for some backup. We did it. Killing the golem off and collecting some new recipes once more. Glass related and new mead 
that I'd never seen before. Freya's concoction. Day 62, I started the process, filling up all the furnaces and kilns with silver. I then went on to building a new cooking upgrade, the spice rack, a workbench upgrade, and finally picking up what bars smelted. Looky, looky, I've got more things to craft again. Looking through all the new things in my forge, I was in awe. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I can do the cape now. Cape makes me, oh, cape makes me look cool. I like it. I wasn't done there, though, because I took off back to the snow biome, mining a bit of obsidian for some required items and made it down the mountains finding myself just outside the plains i needed this location if not now then possibly later and so i built myself a nice and hopefully safe portal afterwards i was lucky enough to say hi to my least favorite thing in valheim a death skeeto a feeling or two and let me tell you these bad boys looked different hey buddy how's it going you want to play do you guys look different or is it just me oh my god they do look different look at them They've been reskinned and reworked. Holy crap. You guys look awesome now. Money! Holy crap. We got money there. Day 63, I used some of the silver building a new forge related bench called the Augmenter. This allowed me to change any type of effect or prefix to something else but at random. That was the trade off, though it made for a more rounded idea. The next day, I took a little me time and cooked my meat. <laughs> <laughs> Raising my cooking level as a boss, a chef, and just taking a second to enjoy the moment. A few days went by as I started moving things around my base. The first was going to be the furnaces and kilns. I've always wanted to put these on another level or a different level and tried something out. I started by raising the ground they were on, flattened it out as I started with the foundation. I had a dock built for later use and replaced any wooden plank flooring with stone to give me the pathway buff. It's just an added movement speed buff. I built some stairs up to this new level, trying to flush out both the two. Added some stone foundations around the new level as well to give it more space for me and the furnace and slash kilns. It was coming along so nicely, I was really proud of the idea I wanted to do and actually accomplished. Day 69, I took the hoe and flattened out the extra space I had with the new area I built, cultivating the ground afterwards so I could plant more. On day 70, I wanted to add more lights to my home, so I wasn't always so reliant on the wisp rune. I found some pieces in the Odin's hammer, certain core light sources setting up some arches to hold them up and placing core, core lamps all around my base. I must say this is what was missing. I had them all around the smelting area coming to the crossroads and then by each of my buildings. The next two days I planned out more ideas in my head, first building a throne by the stairs and then staring out to the sea. I had it all imagined. I wanted to build a big castle, but was more out in the sea and leading back and forth from these bridge-like passways. I also wanted an elevator system that could transport items between floors. Of course, all of this was only hypothetical at the moment, but soon to come. A week went by as I spent time in the cookery, moving a spice rack and some chests about so I could build a new cooking rack, the iron one. This was a chunky monkey. I also made sacrifice after sacrifice summoning the Ikthir boss finding new elements and effects on it, just like the bone mass. I think the coolest one I came across was the five star summon, a huge avatar, and it just felt really different, but in a good way. Oh my God, look at this guys. Look at this, my first five star boss, holy crap. Look how big it is too. You see, this is not a normal size boss. Day 81, I started with more plants, picking up all the seeds that were done and noticed this new item in my crafting hammer. I built a seed totem. So wait, if this plants the seeds around, this is really cool. Very cool. Okay, this is awesome. <laughs> okay, so we tried that. What about the other one we have? While farming, I tried out another mod with the cultivator, the farm grid. Another great invention when it comes to mods because it gives you the possibility, or me, to place things down and auto snap on this square like pattern. Okay, I kind of made the grid on an angle. I, I, I panicked, got happy. This, this is legit so cool. I like this. It literally gives a grid and it snaps in for you. Like it's, it's doing it on its own. I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's doing it, you know? Day 82, I was planning on fighting more of the same boss. Heads at the ready to sacrifice and then this happened. I apparently felt electricity in the air. Hello? Storm wolf, what? Oh, oh my God. Oh, they hit hard. What the, okay, okay, okay. Go, holy Jesus, I gotta use this to kill them. There's a bird. You guys see the bird? Look at the thunder drake. Holy God. Can I hit it with this? Hey, got it. Um, okay. 
Lightning, stone, mead base, uh, obliterator. What's that? <gasps> That's a big wolf. That's a big wolf. Oh, God. Summoning, summoning. Go, 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 go. Distraction, go. I choose you, Pikachu. What is this? You feel an electricity in the air. I sure do. Oh, God. There's another. There's another. There's another. Woo, there's another. I'm so good. Oh, my God. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. If I can distract... Oh, ho, ho. I literally have... All of my stuff is on right now. Like, this is insane. Oh, there's a bird. There's a bird. Ha, ha, there's a bird. A drake. This is different. Same. I don't know. The following day, and something that I learned just now is when I headed back to the snow biome, apparently silver can repopulate, and that was freaking awesome. Collected up all the veins I could with some obsidian, and went back home, storing anything and everything in chests. It came to about day 84 to day 86, I started the big plan I spoke of earlier, extending some of the talk however I could and trying my best not to drown in the process. I was also looking up at the night sky, really appreciating what I was seeing. Such a beautiful thing this game has to offer. A few more days had gone by and I was using another cool mod. This mod was a build camera that allows for almost like creative builds. It was really nice and freeing to be able to build however and whatever I liked. Of course, these are mods, so please don't expect this in the vanilla base game. Day 95 and 96 was interesting though, because I would go on to needing at least thousands of rocks and went back and forth to collecting what I could. Nearing the end of the day, I was being hunted, and this was not a normal hunt. Yes, they were still wolves, but the difficulty on them and the size was way too intimidating. I did my best to survive, running around and using what warlock skills I could to assist me. Day 97, I was back at home and fishing up the outline, with how big I wanted the castle itself to be, filling in more stone slabs and getting closer and closer to being done with the foundation. Day 98, I was out of rocks and finding myself back in the snow biome mining and gathering more well rocks unfortunately for me though i did die which was my fault because i really wasn't paying attention to my health at first i thought i had to travel far and wide but once i went through the snow one portal i was caught off guard ran my booty back up that mountain taking my stuff and the rocks i had both on me and the chest back at home i was starting to build away again but not before another event and one i've actually not seen once yet was the trolley boys the ground started shaking and so I started running, jumping over the wall and fighting the two with all I had. Beat me out, Scotty! <sighs> Alright, now come and fight me, boys. Come on. You wanna fight? Let's go. Okay, that, that kinda hurt. No, 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 why am I sitting down? Don't sit down! Oh my god. Come on, fight me! Oh. No, 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 no. What do you think this is? This is not a freebie? Boop. Got him. Wait, is there more? Day 99 was here and I got to work filling in the rest of the stone slabs one by one and seeing the beginning of my idea come to pass. So as I finished it, I started running about and couldn't be happier with how it came along. With a few rocks to go. Here we go, 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 and boom! We done, we done, we done it, boys, we done it, look at this, look at this! <laughs> Oh, this is where I'm going to build such a, such a house, such a doozy of a house. Last thing I did before heading off to bed was crafting the newest set of armor. Moments after, I tried to augment my headpiece, looking for the bonus armor and failing. I left it at base stamina and called it a night. Day 100 was here and I couldn't begin to explain how happy I really was. That and because so much more was to come. I probably sound like a broken record by this point, but thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys have been so kind, so nice, but more importantly, giving up time to watch my videos. Time is so precious these days, and I can't thank you enough for that. If you did enjoy this video and made it to the end, leave a like and consider subscribing. It's all free and goes to helping me craft more videos like this. You are all the best, and this is Ray of Pandas signing out. Bye, guys.